Hi everyone and happy holidays. I am super excited to be doing this month's book review video um, because we're going to be looking at the work of two amazing photographers, um, Edgar Degas, I'm not sure if that will surprise anyone out there or not, um, and Julia Margaret Cameron, my all-time favorite photographer. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to get started with this book on Degas. Um, now admittedly it's not the, admittedly, sorry, it's not the longest book or the biggest book there really is, so it'll, it'll be quite short going through it because most of the front is just all written sections um, based a lot on uh, letters from friends that had survived of Degas and, um, and things like that, so for first-hand accounts of his, um, his forays into photography, so I'm sure you're interested if you're interested in reading more about that. Um, I didn't see anything that really went into his technique on photography um, that could have just been due to not reading carefully enough though. Um, but uh, but what I did read in um, kind of researching this book and all was that Degas mostly photographed work at night um, and they've speculated that that was either due to um, to him working on his drawings and paintings in the day, and his sculptures of course, um, but also that it could have been uh, because he had greater control over the light. So start flipping through this, it's, um, it's a really beautiful book, very nicely laid out, um, and, interesting. and as I was saying it's not that, um, there's, it's not that big of a book, but um, that's actually also due in part to the fact that many of his photographs have been lost to time. Um, including I read uh, some some like moonlit scenes that he did um, and I believe there's only two known um, daylight uh, landscapes known to exist now and there there possibly could have been more of those in his time that have been uh, lost but it's a very beautiful work I feel like it um, really highlights how amazing of a how amazing Degas compositions were um, so for that, I definitely think it's very, very interesting. And if you're if you're interested in Degas' work, then I highly recommend it. But yeah, some pretty short book, but uh, a very solid one. All right now we're going to move on to one of my absolute favorite books. Um, our books. This is just if I'm ever in need of inspiration, this is definitely a go-to. Um, much like Cameron's work has been um, for me ever since I discovered it, really, which was actually in a um, I believe it was actually my sister's art history textbook. It was before I even took art history, so um, so definitely really, really amazing. Um, the beginning section again, like so many of these books, all written. Um, it does go in, it does break down into kind of um, uh, almost like a biography. You know, covers different parts of her life um, in a little bit more of a structured way than some, um, such as the Degas book we just looked at, where it was more. Uh, based on first-hand accounts of people that he knew. So I'm going to just go ahead and flip through this section because it is, uh, there are quite a few plates to get here, um, to get to here in this book that I'll want to take more time on. Oops. So, yeah, there we are. So, Julia Margaret Cameron um, was born in 1815, actually, but did not become a photographer in earnest until um, 1863, 1863, whenever she was, uh, her daughter and son-in-law gave her a gift of a camera. And so at that point she was around 48 years old and, um, and uh, you know, became a photographer at that point in her life. So it's really interesting, really inspiring to, you know, the idea of picking something up later in life and, well, still being able to become a master at it, so I really love her story. Um, she's a, I'm just in love her work. Um, I should say, this book focuses on her, as the title implies, uh, focuses on her portraits of women, um, but she did photograph um, many other uh, people. She, she mostly photographed portraits, but um, she did photograph uh, other, <laughs> other genders beside women. Um, so just she, um, some of the people that she photographed actually included uh, like Charles Darwin, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and um, Alfred Tennyson. So really interesting there. Um, 
she photographed some amazing people. Um, but yeah, so she, um, just she picked up photography later in life and um, was inspired um, by everything from early Renaissance art to pre-Raphaelite art, um, which you think I'm kind of similar. But um, anyway, so she was inspired by um, by paintings and um, very inspired by literature. She was an avid reader, so she drew from um, a lot of amazing inspirations and. Uh, she was actually also friends with a um, symbolist painter. Um, I don't know if that's how you defy him. Um, but anyways, uh, what was his name? Um, George Frederick Watts. Sorry, there we are. George Frederick, Frederick Watts was a friend of hers, and he would advise her on um, composition and symbolism in her work. So it's really interesting. I do feel like a lot of that shows um, in her photography, a lot of these, um, which is why I wanted to make sure I included uh, <laughs> said it all in this video because I feel like it really does show in her work and uh, the importance of, of all of these influences uh, and just these stunning photographs she created. So we are nearing the end here and um, truly is a just a beautiful book about a beautiful artist. So very cool. Yep, so that is that. As always, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, super excited to be doing these still, even if I can't do them as often. But um, let me know if you have any suggestions and enjoy your holiday.